Hi there and welcome back or welcome to my channel if this is your first time here. My name is Amy and I have an unfortunate obsession with Formula One. So on today's agenda, we're going to be looking into the world of Australian motorsport. So the Australian GP is this weekend and Red Bull's little video and some promo photos from the Australian GP account have got me thinking about the sheer amount of motorsport talent we have in this country. Well, not in this country that I'm currently in, but in Australia where I live. Yeah, I want to keep this video nice and brief, so first off we're going to start with Formula 3, as it is the first time that they will be racing at the circuit. Now, we have three Aussie drivers on the grid who will be making the Albert Park debuts. Starting with Hugh Barter. It's his first season in F3 and he is racing for Campus. Now he has some success in his early career, starting karting in 2012. In 2021, he finished second in the French F2 Championship, and last year he came second in that championship again, as well as second in Spanish F4. Then racing for the same team is Christian Mansell, and whilst his profile may say he's British, we claim him as Australian, okay? Considering he only started his karting career in 2018, it is pretty impressive that he's up to Formula 3 already. In 2019, he competed in both the New South Wales and Australian Formula Championship before making the leap over to Europe the next year. In 2021, he came third in the GB3 Championship, and in 2022, he was once again third in the Euro Formula Championship. And this is technically his rookie season, but last year he also competed in four F3 events. Finally, we have Tommy Smith for VAR, and whilst his track record isn't as impressive as the other two, it is just really cool to have another Australian in the sport. Now we get into the big leagues, F2 and F1. I've decided to group these next few drivers into the same category just because it makes sense in my brain. Don't question it, okay? So, Jack Dillon, current Formula 2 driver and a championship favourite going into the season. Despite not having the best starts of the year, However, he did pick up a podium last weekend in Saudi Arabia. So, he is of course the son of the famous MotoGP rider, Mick Doohan, who won five titles consecutively, which is pretty impressive. Jack began his karting career in 2011 and was picked up by the Red Bull Junior team back in 2018, finishing that championship in fifth. Now, fast forward a few years to 2021, and in the second season of F3, he finished the championship in second, just behind Dennis Hauger. 2022 marked his first year in F2, and he finished the championship in sixth. This was also his first season without Red Bull, and he was picked up by the Alpine Academy instead. This year in 2023, he is now a testing and reserve driver for the Alpine F1 team. Sticking with the whole Alpine Junior theme, let's move on to Australia's latest F1 debut, Oscar Piastri, who I am so excited for that I made a whole video on him last year that I will leave linked down below if you want to check that out. So yeah, for the sake of time and keeping this brief, I will try not to repeat myself, but yeah, if you want more info. But essentially, he is incredible, winning back-to-back -back F2 and F3 titles before he was forced to take a year out of the sport as there was no seats for him in F1. Acting as a reserve driver for Alpine, before causing a little bit of controversy, I'm moving to McLaren for the season in Formula 1. I feel like with the amount of controversy he caused last year that there was a lot of pressure on his shoulders going into the season. I also feel like a lot of the pressure has been taken away considering how awful that McLaren is. I don't know, it's fine, everything's fine. It's gonna get better, I swear. I swear it'll get better. But that is sort of, that's a topic for another day, but it'll get better, McLaren fans. It will. He has, however, done a pretty solid job this season, in my opinion, his qualifying in Saudi Arabia being a stand-up moment for me, personally. I can't wait to see what he does for the rest of the season, and I can't wait to see a local hero hit the streets of Albert Park for the first time. Unfortunately, not in person this time. As for other motorsport series, is, there is Australia's biggest one, being Supercars, which again, I made a whole video of. I'm just passionate about Australian motorsport, okay? Leave me be. There have been some pretty big names to come out of supercars, but if you don't know supercars, you probably don't know who they are, so I'm gonna leave that. However, currently there are a few other names dotted around various motorsport series. 
coming from Australia, so I'll just I'll list a few now. We have Will Power in IndyCar, Jack Miller in MotoGP, and Ryan Briscoe. I haven't seen that right in the World Endurance Championships, to name a few, and I am sure there are many others. Also, in my research for this video, I discovered that there are so many more Kiwi drivers, like in this national level, and that just shocks me personally. It's tiny how there's how there's so many Kiwis everywhere. Now, we can't really mention modern Australian motorsport without talking about the Honey Badger himself. Obviously a really well known name and an 8 Grand Prix winner who we know can fight with the best of the best. Now, I'm somewhat of a Daniel Ricciardo fangirl. I literally have a theme tattoo that you can't see because my Daniel Ricciardo shirt is hiding it. So much March. Um, photos from in my room. Not in a creepy way though, just in a I appreciate this driver kind of way. Obviously he's out of a seat this season, but with the recent Red Bull trauma, who knows, he could be in that seat next to Max next season. Just saying, just putting it out into the universe. So to conclude, the future for Australian motorsport looks pretty bright, despite Daniel Ricciardo not being on the grid this year. And yeah, we might not have as many drivers on the international stage as say the UK or Germany, or France, or pretty much any other European country. But we do have our shining stars. And I'm currently rereading Formula One with the Australian and New Zealand story, so, so if you want a more detailed video of Australians in Formula One. But yeah, it is fair to say we have a pretty rich history in this sport. So yeah, if you'll ever like me to cover that or give like a book review or something, let me know in the comments down below. And this brings this video to a wrap. Comment down below if you're as excited as I am for the Australian Grand Prix this weekend. Unfortunately, I will not be there in person this year. I'm I'm in Spain that week and I currently live in the UK, so it's kind of hard to get there. But if you are going, I am very jealous of you. And if you like the video then, like it and press the red button to subscribe for more F1 and motorsport related content and I will see you all in the next one. Laters!